In this video, we're gonna look at the subtle differences between drive systems. If you're looking to buy a car and you're just curious as to whether you need some of these setups, this video will explain the pros and the cons of each of these drive systems and help you to decide which one you should choose. And we're also gonna look at some of the compromises that manufacturers have come up with to give you the best of both worlds in certain situations, like the Volkswagen Audi Group Haldex Quattro system. We're gonna mention the Formatic and the X-Drive as well that BMW have come Come out with and just compare some of the differences between the different manufacturer setups. <laughs> So a lot of people in their heads just assume that four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive and quattro mean exactly the same thing. But there are some subtle differences between these terms. And actually knowing what's involved can actually determine which car and which setup is most appropriate for you and for your needs. So in a car with all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive systems, there's some similarities at the start. You've got an engine, a power plant, and that will go through some kind of torque converter or clutch. And then finally through the transmission. And after the transmission is really where the magic happens, where the differences are between all these different drive systems. So in an all wheel drive vehicle, you've got a center differential. And in a four wheel drive car, you've got a transfer case. The four wheel drive system also has a rear differential. And in the four wheel drive system, if the rear wheel drive differential is engaged, you've also got the front wheel differential engaged at the same time. So in an all wheel drive system, you've generally got all of the power going to one of the axles and a clutch pack or some type of clutch setup is present and to divert it between the wheels as and when it's required. So all wheel drive systems main characteristic is the fact that it diverts the all wheel drive transmission system it significantly alters the way the torque is distributed between the driven wheels. In a four wheel drive system it's up to the driver to decide where that power goes whether it's a two wheel drive setup or a four wheel drive setup and in some cases you can select the front or rear drive. So all wheel drive is more complex, it's computer controlled and generally that is the performance option that people would go for. The four wheel drive setup is good for vehicles that are off road. They're not particularly there for performance in terms of cornering and speed but they're there to get over rugged terrain and to make progress when things get difficult. Now Quattro is Audi's drive system. It was first launched in the 1980s and gave them a phenomenal advantage in rallies. The Quattro system comprises the following part. Controlled multi-plate clutch, a rear axle coupler with differential, a drive select, transmission control unit, a quattro control unit, a quattro speed sensor and a wheel speed sensor. And using all of those components it comes together to ensure that the maximum amount of torque is delivered where it needs to to propel the car either forwards or to aid cornering. So generally at high speeds the computer will select two-wheel drive and it's generally the front wheels that take the torque when there's no load, no dynamics, you're just cruising, which helps preserve fuel economy. But within milliseconds, if it detects that it needs to divert that torque elsewhere, it will do so just to maintain the grip and the traction of the car. Formatic is the system that was developed by Mercedes-Benz and that operates in exactly the same principles as the Audi Quattro system. So BMW have come along, they've created the X-Drive system, which again is very similar to the Mercedes and the Audi units, the X-Drive system is there ready for you whenever you encounter difficult conditions such as gravel, snow, ice or just a wet slippery road surface. The X-Drive system is monitoring the speed of each wheel and it also looks at the steering angle so the more complex systems can detect whether you are actually trying to drift the car and they can set the torque distribution to enable you to maintain that drift more easily which is kind of cheating but it really does help to give some very impressive driving so what are the advantages of all these different drive systems? Well, two wheel drive is obviously the most economical. It's the cheapest to produce and it requires the least amount of maintenance and looking after. Four wheel drive is best suited to difficult conditions, difficult terrain, where all four wheels require torque in order to get the vehicle from A to B. And with a four wheel drive setup, if you can switch it to two wheel drive, you've got the best of both worlds. You can tailor the system to suit whatever driving conditions you're currently in. I should mention also the Haldex Quattro 
system, um, which is a derivative that Audi and Volkswagen Group have used on a lot of cars like the Golf, the A3. The smaller cars have this Haldex setup. So most of the power, 97%-ish, goes to the front wheels and only a couple of percent goes to the rear wheels. But as soon as it detects a slip condition, the power is diverted to the rear axle to enable the car to maintain traction and control. So it automatically switches between this economical two-wheel drive mode and the powerful grippy four-wheel drive system as and when you need it depending on the conditions that you're driving in. So even with a two-wheel drive, a front-wheel drive setup, you can certainly improve its cornering if you focus on the differential which diverts the torque between the two wheels. And most cars have a, a very poorly designed differential which works okay, it's quite cheap, but as soon as one wheel starts to lose traction, more power goes to it. So if you jacked up the front right of your car, for example, you wouldn't be able to pull away because all the torque would be going to that right wheel because it is spinning freely. And you really want a system that sends some of the torque to both of the wheels and can detect that slip condition where the wheel has no grip and it's freewheeling and it can then adjust and provide power to the other wheel. So you can reduce your track times fairly significantly by fitting some kind of torque sensing differential system to your car. We're going to cover that in another video. The downside of all wheel drive is that you will reduce your fuel economy. More energy is being absorbed from the engine. There's more transmission loss because there's a greater transmission area that it's going through. So generally you will get worse fuel economy on an all wheel drive system. Things are much more electronically managed. The wheels are not necessarily all driven at the same rates. There's a computer in the car or some kind of mechanical device that decides where the power needs to go. So if you were cornering, for example, it might put more power on the outside wheels and less on the inside wheels and it will improve the rate of cornering. So there are a lot more complex systems. They're generally not usually selectable because there's a clever setup going on in there and it's deciding where the power actually goes. Some of these electronic four wheel drive systems are really enhancing the characteristics of the car's handling, enabling the car to corner as if it is actually on rails. It's phenomenal what this actually does to cars. I drove an S6 with the Quattro system and it felt substantially lighter than my A3 just because of the way it handled with the Quattro system. So I could really confidently throw it in corners. And despite it being a massive car, probably at the time the biggest car I'd ever driven, it, it handled like a much smaller one and was much, much sharper. So the Quattro system and the four wheel drive system is quite a phenomenal setup and certainly worth considering for the performance it offers and whatever power output the engine is, you're likely to get all of that power down on the road in any condition. So if you're looking to buy a car, look at the manual and the instructions that come with it and just determine what type of drive system you actually need. If you're tuning a car, you probably do want some kind of rear wheel drive or all wheel drive setup just to enable you to get the power on the road. You will generally find at about 200, 225 horsepower, you start to get serious traction issues off the line on the front wheel drive setup. And as you start increasing the power, that traction issue becomes more and more manifest and evident. And I know I've seen cars with six, 700 brake horsepower just through the front wheels, but they are pretty much undrivable in everyday traffic. You can only really use the power when the car has actually started to get going. So in my book, you've wasted a lot of the investment in that tuning project because you can only use it in a very, very small proportion. It's like buying an 80 inch television, but just watching a 40 inch window in the middle, you're wasting the effort. There's a lot more potential there that you could use. And if you just diverted to a quattro or all wheel drive system, it would make a substantial difference to getting that power on the road. So I hope this video has been useful to you. It's uh, cleared up some of the mystery around these different drive systems. It certainly is quite confusing. A lot of manufacturers have got their own labels for things, but th there is basically those few types. There's the Haldex type system, which switches between predominantly front wheel drive to rear wheel drive when it needs it or all wheel drive when it needs it. There's the Quattro or four wheel drive systems, which are electronically governed and determine where the power needs to be and make sure that you get the maximum traction. And there's the all wheel drive, which drives all four wheels, but you can usually switch those into a two wheel drive system, depending on the manufacturer and the setup. Please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.